Okay, so first things first is who can tell me what these are? Contractors. Contractors. You know what they do? Measure, measure angles. Okay, so if I were to draw this, how would I measure an interior angle with one of these? Point the bill would go on the end of the angle, and then you. Like this? No, aligning the bottom line. Okay. Do the line. So I'm aligning the bottom line. And then you can. And this one does have a little line. Okay. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Okay. So you can see where it goes. So this triangle that I drew happens to be 60 degrees on the interior angle. Now, if I wanted to find the exterior angle, what would I do? Draw what a little. Draw a little line. Draw a little line where? Um, on the bottom. Yeah. Okay, and what would I do then? Um, put the middle part, well, align it first, and then put the vertex of it, and then, yeah. Okay, so if I know that 60 degrees is the interior angle, what's going to be the exterior angle? 180 minus 60, um, 120. Good. <laughs> so we know that in triangles, what are the interior angle measures? What do they all add up to in a triangle? 180. 180, okay. So what happens when you get to a square? What are the interior angle measures at that point? 360. 360? Like each angle is 360. 360 is a circle. Who else? What else? Well, quadrilateral is kind of interior. Okay, so here's what happens. When you're looking at interior angle measures, okay, of shapes, when you go up in size, you're just adding 180 degrees each time. Okay, so if this is 180 degrees, and you're adding 180 for the other side, what's the square going to have interior angle measures of? 360. Oh, I see what you did there. Okay, what about if I put this shape? What would be the interior angle measures here? 180 plus 3. Well, you have 180. Right? And you know that 180 is a 3. Oh, so 180 times 2? 360. Well, you have 180, and you added three sides here, right? Because if you take this out, that's your triangle. So you've got oh, 1, you 2, 3. You added how many sides? Um, you added, uh, wait, what added 1 here. 2 would be 5, 3 would be 6, right? So if this has 6 sides, I added 3 sides, right? Oh. So if I'm taking 180 and each time you add a side, you add how many? 180. Okay, so what am I going to add to 180? 180. Any more? 180. Yeah. 3 times. Because you added 3 sides, remember? Sorry. You added the three sides. Okay. So there is a formula. Instead of having to add 180 each time, okay, there's a formula for finding the interior angle measures. What you would do is you take the n, which is the number of sides, so you would take n minus 2. Okay, that's your first part. And then you would multiply by 180. That's how you're going to find the interior angle measure of any polygon, any regular polygon. Okay, so let's try this formula for a triangle. How many sides does a triangle have? Three, Three sides. Three minus two is? One. One times 180 is? 180. Okay, so... Pick a number. Anyone throw out a number? 40. 40. 40. What am I going to do? Minus 2. 38, right? Anyone have a calculator here? There you go. All right, so 38 times 180. Okay, 
So you know that there's going to be, in a 40-sided polygon, 6,840 degrees, okay? If you wanted to find the degree of each side, what would you do? By how many? By the amount of sides. So if I were to divide this by 40, what would be, what would be the answer? What am I looking for? Okay, 171 would be what? Good, the amount of one interior angle. Here's the one other thing that you guys need to know about this, and then we're going to get into like a little fun project. <clears throat> when you are doing these, okay, what you need to realize is that the only way this works is if it's a regular polygon, which means that all of the angle measures have to be what? Equal. Equal, okay? So, can you do it with this kind of a triangle? No. Why? Good. What would be this angle? 90. 90. And so these must be... What kind of triangle is this? Right. Right. Which would give me what? Close. It's a right angle, and this has a thinner side here. Going on. Did I do that? Did that help? Sorry. What's this one? Good. 69. So, if I were to try that formula with this triangle, it wouldn't work. Okay? Because the angle measures are not the same. Okay. Let me see. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13. Okay, so we are going to break up two groups of two groups of four, one group of five. Is that right? Yes. Two groups of four, one group of five. I don't care. You guys make your own groups. That's fine with me. Grab one. Move into them. You can bundle up the desks. Get into a compartment, guys. Or if you you guys want to have more than that, that's fine. Less than that, that's fine. Okay, I'm going to give you guys a protractor. I'm going to give you guys a protractor. I'm going to give you guys a protractor. Did you guys want to work with them, or did you guys want to work together by yourselves? Okay. Awesome. Okay, so... The first thing that I want to do Okay. I've got three groups over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you guys these. Okay? And what you're going to do is give me the interior angle measures of at least two of the shapes on here. Okay? So you guys are going to take this Measure, measure two of the interior angles of the shapes and write them down. Once you're done, we're going to pass them. You can draw it. You can measure it just against the shape.
there's no space between each of the lines, okay, and all of the angle, angles of that shape are equal to each other, okay? This is what a tessellation is. It can be made with any regular polygon. And who can remind me what a po regular polygon is? Polygon that has all the same angle measures. All equal angle measures. Good. Okay, so what I'm going to do is you can use those uh, with the... Uh, tracing stencils that you have. Uh, and I'm going to pass out different size squares. Okay? Um, what you guys are going to do with these is create 
uh, one square tessellation. Okay, so I'm going to give you one big square and one little square. Okay, with your group, create one square tessellation. You can use the big square only, you can use the small square only, you can use the big square and the small square, it's up to you. Guys, I'm going to draw a couple other different tessellations anywhere. Just, you know, you can make just a, a little half, half sheet of paper of the tessellation. I'm going to draw a triangle tessellation up here. start on triangles. <laughs> like I said, you can use those, so that's fine. But oh, you have to make sure you do if you use those. Uh, the equilateral Yes, only the equilateral ones. What type of shape you cannot tessellate? A circle. Yes, that's true because you can't get this would never connect. There would always be open space, right? Okay, so what else? What else can't you tessellate? A pentagon. Why? A pentagon has five sides. Okay? to do this, it wouldn't, it wouldn't tessellate properly. What about this? Can I tessellate a quadrilateral? Why can't I tessellate this? What's the rule about tessellations? What type of polygons do you have to do it with? Equal regular, regular, po they're called regular polygons, they're equal, right? Okay, so what's the difference between this and that? <laughs> Guys, what's the difference between this and a square? square. Right, well, it, the sides are not as much an issue in this area. What about it? Again, the sides are not necessarily what we're looking at in this particular area. What's really important in a regular polygon? Angles. What is different about this and a square? Their angles are not equal. This, this angle may be equal to this angle, and this angle may be equal to this angle, but this angle is not equal to that angle, right? So if you don't have all four angles being equal, it's not going to work, okay? Could I do it with this shape? 